Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Good morning, Bix. We're RoadRoad.com with your morning horn disease, your sip of chaga coffee. Um, some of you silver bugs might have woken up to a straight line jump up um, in the uh, Comex when it opened. I don't know what to tell you. It's a click of a mouse. <laughs> Road to Ruta followers, just get your assets in your own possession and don't look at the price. That's my advice to anybody. Set up your lawn chair. Don't think about government. Don't think about silver or cryptos or gold or the destruction of everything that's about to happen. You're going to see strange things like this happen almost daily coming up. Uh, Cliff High describes them as the dollar days for silver. I Meaning it goes up $1, $2 at a time, $3, $5 at a time. Um, and the, I think the biggest thing now is the obvious lack of physical metal that's out there. Um, I'm going to show you something very interesting, but... Just for a little view of where we can go, here's the 20-year uh, price of silver. In 2011, it peaked at 49, I think it was 49.50 or something to that effect. I don't think it hit 50, actually. It was right around there. Um, that was orchestrated. That was orchestrated um, by a guy named Bill Daly. Bill Daly came from J.P. Morgan. Jamie Dimon directly input Bill Daly as Obama's chief of staff right at the beginning of 2011 because Jamie Dimon had a problem with silver that they inherited, the short position they inherited for Bear Stearns, and they were offsides, massively offsides, uh, meaning they had way too many shorts. Bart Chilton admitted it. The head of the CF, or not the head, one of the commissioners of the CFTC admitted it, but he said they didn't do anything about it because it was a political decision not to. Since when... Our regulators, well, since always, regulators dance to the tune of their master, and the master is the current administration in charge. They either dance or they're out. <laughs> it's insane. Anyway, what Bill Daly and Jamie Dimon did in 2011 was create an artificial bear market. They brought the price of silver from $20 to $50, and then on May 1st, they slammed it down, and when Bill Daly left at the end of the year, it was back at $20. That is how you create an artificial bear market, and you just hold it there with derivatives. It's that simple. Uh, there is no such thing as a free market. I know a lot of really good silver analysts uh, have said, you can't fight the trend. I, I say bullshit. <laughs> I say you absolutely can manipulate through a trend, which we saw in silver from 2011. It's still going on today. We haven't hit silver look at think of all the money printed and all the derivatives created since 2011 and we are at still half of what the all-time high was back then was it a manipulated all-time high of course it was every trade is manipulated since 1971 72 actually i think they put the cft this version of the cftc in in uh, 74 and that's when the official manipulation started and the official cover-up by the regulators. That's when Alan Greenspan implemented his computer trading programs at the Fed. No, he wasn't in the Fed until 87, but he was running it through his computer programs. He was one of the first computer programmers. He blamed himself for Y2K, by the way. He, put, he only put two digits in a, a group of him, uh, a few of people like Greenspan who were very big into computers in the 60s, John Kimeney, the guy who invented basic computing, and Alan Greenspan were high school buddies. And absolutely, uh, Greenspan's mentor was a guy named Arthur Burns who ran the Federal Reserve. That's how Fed, that's how all, this all happened. All these distortions happened because of market manipulation. And when you have computers running the show with unlimited buy sells and swaptions and you name any exotic derivative it has been played with silver um so yeah amazing story the silver price suppression has been going on for 170 years that's why cliff's data says silver becomes unobtainium unobtainium means you can't find silver at any price ten thousand dollar an ounce silver you can't find it it's just the 
at some point the market just shuts down because it's broken. The exchanges are broken. The market's not necessarily broken. The exchanges are broken. We need to find out what the true fair market value of silver is, and I guarantee you it is much higher than a thousand bucks an ounce in a freely traded silver world. Why? Because every manufacturer who has any electronics in their end product needs silver for that. How much would Apple pay to to buy to make sure they could sell an iPhone? How much will Samsung pay to make sure they would sell flat screen TVs? How much would Elon Musk pay to make sure he can make his solar panels and to make sure he can make his electric cars? They'll pay a hell of a lot more than $25 an ounce. Would they pay 10 grand an ounce for silver? I don't know, a 10 grand an ounce for silver, they probably won't be buying. They'll just shut down their facility and you will be buying. Investors will be buying. <laughs> and we're going to laugh at this price just all the way to the bank is what they used to say. And now we, we don't go, you don't cash in your silver. I'll never sell my silver, ever. I'm going to swap silver for things I need. If I need food that week, I'll swap a silver dime and grab a week's worth of groceries. That's, that's the mindset you have to have. And you'll understand when silver breaks free because it's going to go literally from $30, it's going to jump right to $50, puddle around there, and from $50 right to $250, and then right to $600, $800, and then pull back, and then go to $1,000, $2,000. Ultimately, it's not necessarily silver, although silver is a massive component of, of what's going on to take out the banks. It's the value of the dollar. So yes, it will cost you $100 to buy a loaf of bread. Anyway, uh, let's talk about what's happening with the big guys. Now, this is really important stuff. We see stuff like this, <clears throat> and you think, wow, what was it about silver that made it jump such a huge amount instantly? Well, maybe it was what was done yesterday. Obviously, the big players who know what's going to happen beforehand make their moves the day before, and voila, that's exactly what they did. As you can see here, the trade types, the exchange for physical, the exchange for risk, the uh, exchange for swap, the uh, trade settlement, trade settlements, they bought silver that day and instantly transferred the contract to the LBMA for delivery. So look at all these. These are each each one contract is five thousand ounces. So yesterday, this is all aside. This is not not talking about. Oh, I'm buying a a silver contract on the Comex and I'm going to take delivery into the next delivery month. No, no, no. These are people saying I need my silver now instantly. You add up all those forty seven point seven million ounces was transferred over to the Comex or other derivative areas yesterday. Huge number, 47.7 million. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of silver. Harvey Oregon keeps track of this. We are on track to be have one of the biggest transfer, well, with this. I don't know if he counts all of them or just the exchange for physical. Um, but if he counts all of them, they're at 100 million ounces and only one-third into April. And the all-time high is 200 million ounces. So we, we are on track to have the all-time high. And that's people saying, oh, my God, I'm in the derivative market. I have this massive position. I don't think the comics is going to be able to deliver, so I'm going to transfer everything over to London or different areas. And those are the games played with derivatives. Not that you can get it out of London because it's an association. It's not an exchange. So we'll see. If, if London defaults... Would we know about it? No, we wouldn't know about it. So, really interesting. Great time to buy silver. Andy Sheckman's work never worked so hard in his life. I love it. If you have a silver order, contact Andy ASAP. I would highly suggest buying what he's got in inventory. Because as soon as your money clears with him, you do a wire transfer. As soon as the money clears, he can ship it to you. Because he's got it in inventory. Um, yeah, Premiums are going to go through the roof, but they're going to be even higher later. Just remember that. Physical silver is processed physical silver. And somebody had, uh, emailed me about trying to sell a 1,000-ounce bar. 
Well, once the thousand ounce bars get removed from the comics inventory and, and the comics tracking system, it can never go back in. That's the problem. Maybe if, if you sell it to JP Morgan and he shuffles it into, they shuffle it in their inventory, but they're not going to even give you a spot for that because it hasn't been processed yet. It's, it's like buying, you know, the, the raw metal right out of the ground. You got to do all the processing to get it in the hands of an investor. And the problem with the thousand ounce bars is that's the comex weight. That's the comex size bars. And they're very selective about what bars they have because they don't want to drill into every bar. It's the only way you can really tell. You don't know. You don't know what you bought. You might have a, a thousand ounces of molybdenum coated by you know a, a quarter inch of silver. So yeah, I, I know some dealers that'll buy I don't Andy might buy it back. Uh, but they won't pay, I don't think they'll pay a spot. And usually the people who buy the big comics bars are the ones who are trying to get the best price, trying to get the best deal. Um, the best deal is knowing that one day when silver goes to $1,000 an ounce, you don't have you know a big chunk of silver, a million dollars worth of silver in one bar. I think I did the math, right? Yeah. A million dollars worth of silver in one bar that you can't sell. I mean, obviously, it's a price for everything. I think probably the, the best price you can get is go have it processed by one of the uh, big manufacturers, Sunshine Mint or something. I don't know what they use, uh, what kind of silver stock they use. Probably thousand ounce bars, but they got they got to melt it down. They got to form it into coins or bar, or smaller bars or whatever. So, yeah, just be careful out there. Um, all that costs money, so yes, so thousand ounce bars outside of the comics will probably um, comics warehouses will probably fetch less than spot. I don't know how much less, but that's where we are. Great interview, Elon Musk. The BBC tried to say, "Oh, there's so much hate speech on Twitter." It's I can't play it because it, you know they'll they'll ding me for you know copyright infringement. But basically, Elon just keeps harping on the guy. Wait, wait, wait. You, you claimed, here, he said, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this to you. When asked why there's so much hate speech on Twitter since he took over, Musk pushed back, challenging Clayton to provide a single example. Clayton couldn't. Then says, quote, you said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a, name a single example, not even one, to which Clayton replied, I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three weeks or four weeks. And I, and then uh, Musk says, then how could you have seen hateful content? I'm asking for one example. You can't give a single one. Then I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about because you can't give a single example of hate, hateful content, not even one tweet, and yet you claim that the hateful content was high. That is false. You just lied. Ha! Ah, I love it. I love it. A lefty gets destroyed again by Elon. God, I love that guy. I love that guy. Classic. And then we have Such is Life. FTX bankruptcy filing details Sam Bankman frieds cavalier attitude towards misplaced $50 million. <laughs> they, there was no controls because it's a deep state operation. They controlled everything. They didn't need controls on money. At that time, they, they were you know, rolling in the cash. It didn't matter, 50 million here. So what? We've got 60 billion. We're, we're in charge of Tether. We're taking over the crypto world. We're taking over the bankers. We, get, we got our Silvergate Bank. We got all our, our ducks in a row. We're the deep state. We can do whatever. Bonk. Deep state's going to be destroyed. Is This is part of the destruction. Sam Bankman Freed. Anybody who invested kept their money, kept their cryptos in an exchange, you made a huge mistake. Massive mistake. If you keep your money in your cryptos in Coinbase right now, massive mistake. In any third party, anything for cryptos or for silver, it's a massive mistake. You will lose 100% of your money or your wealth or your assets or whatever you want to call them. Get out of the system, sit in your lawn chair and watch the show. This is a really exciting part of the show because the people who run Sam Bankman Freed, like his parents, for example, are some of the henchmen in the deep state leftists trying to destroy our country. They should be they should be tried for treason. Absolutely. 
we'll see what happens as we go. Anyway, that's what I got for you this morning. You guys have a good one. If you want to join the road to Rip right now, as of today, at 12 o'clock, or uh, April 12th, at, what time is it? 7.28, we are still giving away one silver Ruta coin for every subscription to the private road. And yeah, you're going to want this coin. Uh, it, just the collector's value when the road to Ruta theory is proven correct. You're going to love that. So go check it out. Um, it, it's true for renewals as well. You can renew as many times as you want. We'll tack on a year um, for each renewal. All right. This is Bix. I'll talk to you later. Things are getting exciting. Mm -hmm.